Hello and welcome to this year's YPI final at Forrester High School. To say this year has been different and challenging would be an understatement, but our third years have been absolutely fantastic and really committed to the cause. In particular, we are really proud of all our YPI finalists who have been an absolute credit to their year group, themselves and their charities. So I won't say too much more. All I ask is that my judges make sure you have your judging pack ready, a little cup of tea, and enjoy what you're about to watch. presentation on Conscious Edinburgh. I'm Katie. I'm Megan. I'm Sophie. And I'm Declan. We really hope you enjoy. For our social issue we chose mental health. We chose this issue because everyone in our team cares about mental health and wants to help others who struggle with it. As young people we have struggles of our own and have many things impact our mental health. From school to home life, friends, family and many more. Mental health affects everyone. It doesn't matter who you are. Mental health is starting to be talked about more as an issue we all face. There are many people and organisations who are trying to raise awareness, but it still isn't being talked about enough as there is still a stigma around it. The charity that we've been working with is called Conscious Edinburgh. They are a student-run charity that work in Edinburgh University to support the students there. We chose this charity because they fundraise for other charities as well as themselves. Another reason is that they are entirely student run. It's by young people, for young people, and we find it inspiring that the students that run it are able to run it alongside their uni work. Conscious Edinburgh is a fresh new charity and was fashioned in 2019. Conscious also work to help charities near Edinburgh as well as their self. Their target is planning to educate students about mental health, serve people with things to help them throughout mental health problems, and a place for them to be safe and themselves. Conscious Edinburgh have three main ways in which they help people. The first of these are support groups where people can talk about how they feel and get the help they need. They also have mental health first aid courses to help people learn to spot signs of depression and suicidal thoughts. Although they are expensive, they are incredibly important. Conscious Convos are sessions for clubs at Edinburgh University that teach them mental health advice. The demographics of Conscious are more unique to other Scottish charities. It is specific to students and entirely student-led. This is something we don't hear much about from other charities and personally we think this is amazing that students have managed to run their own charity at such a young age. Conscious work in the student level rather than going outside of it. We talked to David and Ayanna on a Teams call, both members of Conscious. They think that being student led is very unique and close to their own hearts. They know what students need because they too are part of the target population. In the short term, the support groups that Conscious provides helps everyone that attends them and the mental health first aid courses have an immediate impact on participants as they learn very quickly how to help others with mental health. In the long term, people can use what they learn in Conscious Combos and the first aid courses to help their friends if they're struggling with depression, anxiety or suicidal thoughts. This obviously has a big impact on those people. The main values and goals of Conscious Edinburgh are to provide a safe place for people to help people get the support they need and to offer a non-judgmental environment for people to talk. 
They have more beliefs and values, but these are the three that they believe are the most important. Countries have had a lot of setbacks due to COVID, a big one being that they weren't able to hold their charity ball this year, which is how they fundraise a lot of their money. They also weren't able to run their mental health first aid courses, which are really important, or the conscious combos, which really impact the people that take part. This has been really hard to work through, and we hope Conscious will be able to get their courses up and running again soon. David has struggled with mental health since he was very young, but he was keen to help out when he came to Edinburgh University, largely because he and his friends had experienced it firsthand. He cares a lot about mental health, as well as others within the charity. Ayanna lost a close friend to suicide, and it took a toll on her. Conscious helped her cope with her grief for their bereavement groups, which she attends every Thursday. She enjoys being part of Conscious and she can relate to the experiences of those, of those within the charity. fundraising this year. If they got the money it would go towards support groups and conscious conversations. Times like this are very hard for people who struggle with mental health issues and not speaking to someone who lives in their household. So far Conscious have set up a charity in such a short amount of time which is amazing. They have achieved fundraising goals raising £27,000 for charity. Mental health first aid courses and conscious conversations plus a safe space to talk about your issues. They did a Valentine's Day fundraiser a while back, which they found very fun. A lot of well-being events. They also did an Instagram live chat about mental health. This is something to be very proud of. In the future, Conscious hopes to make all of their services available again and work on getting more people involved with their Conscious combos. They also hope to help more people in general. They also are planning to hold a fundraising auction, educate people using their social media platforms and host more fundraising events. Thank you for listening. That's all we are. The sun comes up and it goes back down. We search for love and it's love we found. We live our life now, we come this far. We won't stop now, this is all we are.
Hi there, and welcome to our presentation about one kind. I'm Emily, this is Ailey, and that's Zach on the computer. First off, why did we choose animal cruelty as our social issue? Well, at first we actually struggled to choose a social issue each of us had a passion for. Nothing was quite clicking with us, but during conversation we realised that each of us loves animals. And animals are such a big part of people's lives, whether it's bringing them comfort, exercise, and they can be extremely fascinating. So we set out to find a charity, and whilst looking through a list of all of Scotland's animal cruelty charities, we came across one kind. And it dawned on us that why just help pets when we could help all kinds of Scotland's animals? We first made contact with one kind over email, and for the next couple of weeks we sent emails back and forth until we scheduled a meeting over Teams, where we discussed one kind's origins, achievements, and what they plan to do next. One kind was originally started by two ladies in 1911 to stop testing on animals. Having two ladies running a charity in 1911 is quite remarkable. The campaign to end cruelty to Scotland's animals. It was founded by a lady named Nina Douglas Hamilton, the Duchess of Hamilton, and is now run by director Bob Elliott. It was founded as the Scottish Society for Prevention of Vivisection and was changed to Advocates for Animals in 1990. But during a rebranding campaign in 2010, it got a new logo and is now known as One Kind. One Kind is an animal welfare charity. One Kind has achieved many things in their 100 plus years, such as they banned circus animals in Scotland about 10 years ago, they moved hedgehogs to a new location to prevent them being wrongfully killed for eating the eggs of brown breasting birds, they, success they successfully stopped the culling of 26,000 mountain hares each, each year on Scotland's grouse moors, and now have successfully campaigned to make it that you need a license in order to shoot, shoot seals. During COVID-19, one kind probably would have went bust if not for their volunteers who left money in their wills to support one kind. If one kind were to win the £3,000, they would use the money to hire an education and diversity officer to oversee their outreach programme. This programme helps them reach out to all sorts of different people from all backgrounds and teach them about the work that one kind do and the issues surrounding Scotland's animals that need to be sorted immediately, such as snares, battery cages and factory farms. Using the money, they would be able to get more people and teach them about animal cruelty in Scotland and show the people that we can stand up to it together, everyone from all backgrounds, whether it be different ethnicities, people of colour, or the LGBT plus community, etc. They would like to get people from various minority groups and be as inclusive as, as they can. We'd like to thank Kirsty Lees, One Kind's fundraising coordinator, and Bob Elliott, the director, for being so kind and helpful to us as we researched One Kind. We're very grateful to have been able to work with them both on this project. What we would like to do in the future is share our knowledge of this charity with the other YPI groups as we feel the Forrester community would, could learn so much about this issue. Thank you for taking the time to listen to our presentation about One Kind. We'd appreciate if you watched the small animatic that I'm made.
Hi, welcome to our presentation. Our chosen charity is Tipping Her. I'm Laurel, this is Emily and Chiara. What is our social issue? Our social issue is disability. Disability is something that affects many people and acts as a boundary against many people to achieve their goals. They are often looked down on because of something that they are born with or something they can't help. Disabilities can have a huge impact on their lives. Things that we take for granted as things that they struggle with. Why we chose Tipper? We chose Tipper because we think it's important that disabled people get treated equally and have the chance to lead a normal life. At Tipper, they engage their residents with different activities that help develop skills that are needed to go on with their daily lives. Therefore, we believe Tipper is a charity that can provide them with great opportunities. My personal experience with people with disabilities is that I have two older cousins who are brothers who both have learning difficulties. One of them is in his early 30s and another one is in his late 20s. Both of them went to a special school and the youngest one has got ADHD and the older one has got autism. Both of my cousins live in assisted living but are in different accommodations. Assisted living has really helped both of them with their social skills and taught them Oh, been more going and it has given them their independence but just taught them how to budget their money. My younger cousin volunteers at Move On Recycling are granting three days a week and he really enjoys it. The older cousin is really into keeping fit and loves going to the gym and playing football. They both don't like any changes in their routines. They were brought up with their dad when they were younger. Their mum passed away and this had a big impact on their lives as their mum was the one who tried to keep their lives normal as possible. Their dad was very protective of them, which had a big impact on their lives as they had no social skills and assisted living was the best thing that has ever happened to them because now they live normal lives. Both of my cousins' mum and dad have tests done to see why both boys were born this way, but their older sister is fine and it would be due to incompatible chromosomes. This is why I would love Tiffenhurst to win the money because if it places like this, disabled people would not have a chance to live an independent life. How we made contact? We made contact by the email they have on their website, which is sales at tiffenhurst.org.uk. The fundraising manager, Gordon Hudson, emailed us back and arranged a video call with us. The video call went really good and Gordon gave us all the information and answers we needed about Tiffenhurst. Gordon told us, Normally we would be invited to go up there and spend the day with them, but due to COVID we couldn't. Services. Tip Earth has two cottages and four houses. In each house, four residents live with house parents, which are people who volunteer to help and care for the residents while they're living in the house. Tip Earth can have up to 70 residents, but due to COVID has been reduced to 50. Perking group, who grows vegetables, builds, plant paths and plant trees. Garden group who looks after the garden. They also turn green waste into compost for the local community. Pen, petland group, sorry, a woodwork group who make furniture and signs. They also help other picking places such as water of leaf and they also help drop off firewood and compost for the locals. May group are an indoor group which focuses on art stuff such as weaving, painting, printing and more. They also work in the kitchen and make food and drink for tea breaks and lunch breaks on a daily basis. What would Tip and Hearth do with £3,000? Tip and Hearth would put the money towards building a new workshop for the pottery because it is a big hit with the residents. Or they would put it towards building a bakery for the group so they could sell their cakes and treats they make at all times instead of selling them when they have fundraiser days. Thank you for listening. Hi, we're Team Magic Breakfast. I'm Abdallah, this is Tyler, and this is Tig. What is our social issue? Our social issue is poverty, but in more detail, food poverty. Explain what food poverty is. Food, po food poverty is commonly defined as, as the inability to acquire or, or consume an adequate or sufficient um, quantity of food. In other words, this means you cannot afford food because of certain problems. 
and Abdallah will explain what food poverty can lead, could lead to. Poverty is linked to poor income situations and lifestyle habits, placing the food poor at a higher risk and can lead to many chronic diseases such as hypertension, diabetes and cardiovascular disease. We chose Magic Breakfast and why? We chose Magic Breakfast because it is helping kids by having sufficient energy to do work and achieve big at school. Why Magic Breakfast? How did Magic Breakfast start? Magic Breakfast was founded by Carmel McConnell in, in 2001. Carmel started buying and delivering breakfast to, to five schools in London Borough of Hackney. After hearing from head teacher there that many of their, their pupils were too hungry to learn. Magic Breakfast's aim is to alleviate child hunger as it's a barrier to education throughout the UK. 1.8 million school-aged children are at risk of starting the day hungry in the UK. Nine children every class of 30 live in poverty. 480 schools have partnered with Magic Breakfast throughout the UK. The amount of children fed per day in 2018 were 40,300 and in 2019 48,430. In 2019, Magic Breakfast partner schools receive 2.9 million bagels 1.5 million bowls of cereal and 1.7 million glasses of juice. How did we manage to make contact with Magic Breakfast? We contacted Ma Magic Breakfast through their website and we spoke to them about YPI. When we got set up, we asked a few questions such as how they dealt with COVID, what, what would they do with the £30,000? What did Magic Breakfast do when COVID impacted on the world? Magic Breakfast started doing home delivery. And they started doing home packs too. The po they partnered with Amazon to do home delivery. They raised over one mil over lockdown. They even helped the kids at Forrester High School. No matter what they did, they kept providing for kids. How did Magic Breakfast fund? Communities. Volunteers. Individual givings. Sponsors. Regular donors. Marathons. Amazon corporates. How can the £3,000 help Magic Breakfast? The £3,000 can help Magic Breakfast by providing 8,823 breakfasts, including home delivery. What will we do after YPI? We will promote Magic Breakfast around the school, talk to younger students about the impact of Magic Breakfast, make posters and go around classes telling them that it's Magic Breakfast that's supplying us to keep us energised. We love Magic Breakfast because they give us bagels in the, in the morning. Thanks for listening to our presentation. Hello, my name is Paige. And my name is Amy. Today we'll, we will be presenting about our charity, the Scottish Wildlife Trust, and our opinions on what they do. The social issue we have picked is purely based on the environment around us and the world that we live in, as this is extremely important not only to the wildlife surrounding us but as humans as a whole, as these effects can be positive or negative depending on how we act upon things. So how does our social issue affect humans? Our social issue is about our planet and the environment, however this does not just affect animals and plant life. It also affects us humans with the way we drive millions of cars and pump carbon into our air destroying our atmosphere, and the way we chop down trees that give us oxygen to breathe. We're destroying life around us, and if, we do, uh, and if we don't do something to take action soon, we will have to deal with the consequences. And how are we able to contact our charity? Well, contacting the Scottish Wildlife Trust was extremely easy, so all we had to do was send them an email proposing our idea about YPI. I found that the Scottish Wildlife Trust was really great to work with, as when on a team's call, they answered all our questions fully and honestly, uh, resulting in us getting lots of information to make our PowerPoint. The Scottish Wildlife Trust puts in a lot of effort to help save what's left of our planet, as the Scottish Wildlife Trust started off as a small organisation to help the environment. Over the past 50 years, more and more people have joined. They're also trying to save the extinction of animals, and here are a few examples. A few years ago, beavers had become more rare to find as their habitats were being destroyed. But since then, the Scottish Wildlife Trust have brought beavers back into their homes where they are safe and untouched. This is only one of a few things that they have done to help our environment. Here are another few examples. So our next example is dolphins. One of the people we worked with was named Catherine. She specialises in marine life. 
She told us about marine animals, but mostly focused upon dolphins, and how she was recently able to get in contact with, an, with another organisation that completely focuses on marine life. As she, re, um, as she started to realise over the past couple of decades, marine life like dolphins and whales beca uh, are becoming less apparent in our waters. For insects, we managed to speak to another one of their colleagues, as he was very interested in, in insects and bugs, as there are many different species. They will also look around and investigate the environment and the habitats that they live in as they will go back and study upon them later on in their day. The Scottish Wildlife Trust has no set goals as they recognise that there will always be challenges to overcome. However, one of the main things they focus on is they want more people to be on board with their ideas and ambitions. The Scottish Wildlife Trust consists of over 400,000 people all around Scotland so that this really benefits to when they need to spread the word as you can hold workshops and schools to teach kids about the environment and they, can also, they also have websites you can visit with lots of valuable information. So what would the £3,000 be used for? After speaking with the Scottish Wildlife Trust, they told us that they are a small, they are a small organisation and it would be very helpful for the money to, to go towards more equipment. Another thing to add would be any money left over would go to other small organisations. Once YPI is finished, we would like at some point to bring the Scottish Wildlife Trust into schools to share more information of what they do, as we quite frankly can't cover all in a small amount of time. We would also be happy to raise more awareness of the charity as much as we possibly can. We are grateful that you took the time out of your day to listen and hopefully take in this valuable information. Hopefully you'll be a little more mindful of your surroundings and be more open to what's around you. Again, thank you from Amy and Paige. Hi and welcome to our YPI project. I'm Chloe. I'm Tiga. And that's Jessica over there. Our charity is Bliss. Our, so our social issue is neonatal care for sick and premature babies. For our charity, we chose Bliss. We chose this charity because people in our group have personal stories with family members or themselves being sick as a baby. One of our group members' little cousins was born with cancer. So we chose this charity to help other families with similar issues. First born, she had pneumonia and had to be taken into intensive care. Jessica's mum didn't hold her until she was three days old and they had to spend one week in the hospital until she could go home. We met with a volunteer from Bliss on a teens call where she told us all about the charity and what they do on a daily basis. During the call we spoke about how Covid has got in the way of some of the volunteers work as they can't visit the neonatal, neonatal care units to support the families of premature and sick babies. Due to COVID-19, the volunteers can't go into the hospitals and give support to the parents of the babies, so just now, all the meetings are happening through Zoom. Dads are not allowed in the neonatal care unit due to COVID-19, meaning they aren't able to see their newborns until they have left the, left the hospital. During lockdown and COVID, the amount of parents that have been contacting Bliss for help has at least doubled. Also, midwives can't go to the houses and support the parent and the baby to make sure families are okay and help them and make them less scared. Bliss exists to give every baby born premature or sick in the UK the best chance of survival and quality of life. They champion their right to receive the best care by supporting families, campaigning for change and supporting professional and enabling life-changing research. Bliss also campaigned to get the Scottish Government to pay for the taxes of pregnant neonatal parents during the lockdown. If Bliss won the £3,000, they would make sure they could volunteer in as many hospitals as they possibly can give all the support and information to the families that need to know more about it. And it would also help them make more of their neonatal booklets to give to parents and families and the going home packs they give out when they leave the hospital. We will continue to support Bliss by promoting the chari charity to other YPI contestants later on. Bliss partnered with Pampers to make nappies in suitable sizes for premature babies because the, si the original sizes are too big for them. We use this advert because we weren't able to visit the hospital ourselves to make our own eye movie. I'm coming home, I'm coming home.
coming home. Tell the world I'm coming. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed our presentation about bliss.